Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be covering environmental emergencies. Now, the fact that I'm making this video, you know that I love you guys, because let me tell you something, I am not into outdoor activities. I'm not into animals. I got the heebie-jeebies just preparing to make this video, so don't ask for a part two, because I doubt it's gonna happen. But we're gonna go over environmental um, emergencies. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm gonna ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're gonna love it. Go ahead and give a thumbs up now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And be sure to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. There you can find lots of resources, such as uh, being able to sign up for my next generation and NCLEX review part one and part two, signing up for a tutoring session, signing up for a consultation session. Maybe you want to pick my brain about something. If you're a current nursing student and you have to pass your next exam coming up, you haven't been doing well, you really have to get a higher grade on this exam. I have audio lessons that I'm sure will help you. Be sure to check it out, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram and Facebook. My handle is the same everywhere. Um, I want to start off this video with a prayer. Um, if you're not into that, just go ahead and fast forward. If you are and not operating heavy machinery, go ahead, close your eyes, bow your head. Father God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the health of our children, of our loved ones, of our family members, friends, Father God. Thank you for our health, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. Father God, I ask for forgiveness for our sins. My set, myself, every single viewer, every single listener right now, Father God, I ask that you please enter not in judgment with us. We know judgment is surely death. But Lord, thank you, God, that all we have to do is ask for forgiveness with a sincere heart. And we're assured that's already been given. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father God. Lord, I want to lift up every student that's getting ready for graduation, Father God. They've completed this program. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for them. Lord, I ask that you please help them to not get lazy because they still have to pass their boards, Father God. I ask that you please encourage them and give them the discipline to study accordingly. Father God, I pray for those students who are brand new, about to go into the nursing program that's full of anxiety. They've heard so much, so many horror stories, Father God. Lord, I ask that you please calm their nerves, help them to find at least one person within that program that they can trust to, to study with, to help them, and they can help that one person, help them to find a study group or one person, Lord, that they can continue and finish this program with. Father God, I'm not even worthy to come before for you. But Lord, I tell you, thank you for this gift, this talent that you've placed in me, Father God, that I can relay information to students in a way that they can understand. So Lord, I ask that you please strengthen me in that way. Please help me explain this information in a way that every single viewer, every single listener, when they hear this information, they understand it, they can process it, Father God. And when they see the same content again, Lord, they can critically think through the question and get the answer correct. Father God, let it not be me speaking, but let it be you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done and all you'll continue in our to do in our lives. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. You guys know I love you to be doing a video like this. I'm so annoyed about it, but I love you. We're going we're gonna to do it. All right, so first question. It says, soft tissue radiologic examinations may be most useful after A, a tiger shark bite, B, exposure to a Portuguese man of war, C, tangling with an octopus, octopus or d an attack by a stingray and guys the correct answer is d an attack by a stingray so let's go to the question first let's look at what they're asking us a soft tissue radiologic examination whenever you see the radio that word radiologic what are they talking about an x-ray it's a fancy word for an x-ray so doing an x-ray on a soft tissue what situation would it be most appropriate for us to have x-ray done on a soft tissue the correct answer is attack from a stingray let me explain to you why first of all let's talk about that x-ray we're doing x-ray um or ultrasound it could be an ultrasound too when it says radiologic it'd be extra ultrasound but we're doing this to see if there's any foreign body in the soft tissue these are answer the stingray why because usually they leave a part of their barb in the patient's in the person's flesh right so the reason we're doing that radiologic x-ray we want to see okay is there any foreign bo bodies such as that barb left in the uh, the patient's uh in, I can't speak 
left in the patient's flesh. So that's why um, D is the correct answer choice. A patient presents with swelling of his or her lips and mouth, generalized hives, itching, tachycardia, hypotension, and generalized weakness. The history reveals that the patient was at the beach when the symptoms started. Which of the following is most likely the etiology of the symptoms? A, venom-specific reaction, B, anaphylactic reaction to venom, C, overexposure to the sun, or D, extracellular fluid dehydration? And the correct answer, guys, is B, anaphylactic reaction to venom. And what should have led you to anaphylactic, by the way, anaphylaxis, that's just, uh, well, not just because it's serious, it's lethal. But I want you to think of an allergic reaction times a thousand. It is a very serious potentially lethal allergic reaction. That patient's airway can close up, right? So what are some key words in the question that would lead us to know, okay, we're talking about an anaphylactic reaction and not anything else. You see where you saw generalized hives? When a patient breaks out into hives, or another word you may see is urticaria, U-R-T-I, C-A-R-A, I think I spelled that right, urticaria, that's hives. When the patient breaks into hives, I want you to think of allergies. Most importantly, actually, I want you to think of anaphylaxis, okay? Now, let's look at the wrong answer choices. A, venom-specific reaction. If the patient, you know, was bit by an animal um, and venom was inserted into their body, we'd see things like um, hypotension, yes, hypotension's here, and we see tachycardia. Yes, tachycardia is here. But the itching, the swelling, the generalized highs, not so much, right? So that's not the answer. C, overexposure to the sun. Patients who have overexposure to the sun, you see signs and symptoms of a heat stroke. You see the elevated temperature, right? Hyperthermia. Choice D, extracellular fluid dehydration. Patients who are showing signs and symptoms of dehydration, what would we see? We see increased heart rate, we see that tachycardia, and we see hypotension, that uh, decreased uh, blood pressure. But all these other symptoms, again, the hives, the swelling, the itching, no, not so much. Also, guys, by the way, when it comes to dehydration, if you're looking at the labs, you'd expect to see an elevation in H&H. &H. That's also a telltale sign of dehydration, okay? So the correct answer here is answer choice B. The most commonly needed type of care related to aquatic creature injury will be related to A, anaphylaxis and hypotension, B, para paralysis and muscle weakness, C, infection and tissue necrosis, or D, vomiting and bloody diarrhea. Okay, guys, and the correct answer is infection and tissue necrosis. That's usually the reaction you'll see with these water animals. Why? I want you to think about it. So you get bitten by or injured by a water animal. Why would we expect to see infection and tissue necrosis? Tissue necrosis is like uh, um, death of the tissue, right? The tissue is not getting uh, perfused and so it actually starts to die. I want you to think about it. These animals are living in this uh, water. This is where they're living. This is where they're peeing and pooping. So imagine you get a bite or you get bite, you get injured. Remember, your skin is your first uh, level of defense against infection and pathogens, right? So when your skin, the, the integrity of the skin is disrupted, all that nasty pee and poop and everything else that's in that water is now getting inside of um, that cut or that bite. So yeah, the most common thing that we're going to see is infection and even tissue death from um, decreased perfusion. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. What, uh, a, anaphylaxis and hypotension. Um, these are concerning. That possibly may happen, but it's not gonna be as common as infection or tissue necrosis. So that's why A is not the correct answer. B, paralysis, muscle weakness, again, that's also concerning. It is a possibility, but guess what? Getting an infection is much more common. And matter of fact, that infection may cause those other symptoms that you can see. Those are complications of the infection. So that's why infection tissue necrosis is still the correct answer. Choice D, vomiting um, 
and diarrhea that's not usually a symptom we'd see from injury from aquatic animals we usually see that you know if you travel to a foreign country like a third world country and um you uh drink the water it's not bottled water um you may get food poisoning we see um the vomiting and bloody uh, diarrhea more in like the food poisoning cases, but not where you're actually getting injured or bitten by an aquatic animal. So that's why, again, C is a correct answer choice. The venom of aquatic animals will most likely cause weakness, hemolysis, hypertension, or bradycardia. And the correct answer is weakness. So guys, men, um, the, the venom from marine, marine life can cause weakness. It can cause also um, paresthesia. The patient may have like that um, tingling sensation. It can cause hypotension, tachycardia, seizures. It can even cause the patient to have a heart attack. Okay, so make sure you know those symptoms. A child brought to the emergency department in the early afternoon with a fresh raccoon bite. The raccoon ran away. There are several puncture wounds and a crushing laceration of the child's hand. Which of the following infectious agents is of highest concern? Would it be Staphylococcus, Pastorella, I pronounced that wrong, but you guys see the word, um, rabies, clostridi clostridium. All right, I'm sure most of you guys got this right, rabies. Guys, go back to the question. We're talking about a raccoon. That is a wild animal. Whenever we're concer um, concerned about a bite from a wild animal, a common source of infection from wild animals is rabies. That's number one. Let me tell you what the second clue is. If you go back to the question, it says the child's brought to the emergency room when? In the early afternoon. Well, guess what? Those nasty critters are nocturnal animals. They usually come out at night. So the fact that that raccoon's running around during the daytime biting people, that is suspicious, okay? So that's going to give us a high level of suspicion for rabies because what are you doing out during the day when the sun's out? Okay, so you should suspect rabies. Um, that's what we're gonna be concerned about the most. A parent presents with their infant requesting a rabies shot because they saw a bat flying in the child's bedroom. The emergency nurse would anticipate A, reassuring the parent that unless a wound is found, there's no risk for rabies. B, administering rabies immune globulin and first dose of rabies vaccine. C, setting up appointments for the series of rabies injections twice a day for 21 days. Or D, initiating prophylactic IV antibiotics as soon as possible. And the correct answer is B, administering rabies, immune glob uh, globulin, and first dose of rabies vaccine. This is the rabies series. We are not going to take any chances. So the fact that this wild animal has been seen in an area, a closed area that the patient is, let me go back to the question, da, da, da. In the child's bedroom. This is a closed area that this wild animal has been seen. We're not going to take any sh any um, chances. That child's going to have to get rabies shots. Let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, reassuring. Stop right there. How many times have I told you in nursing, do we ever um, reassure patients? Absolutely not. We give them facts. We give them information, but we don't ever reassure them. Oh, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. That word reassurance, that's your first red flag. Reassurance to the parents that unless a wound is found, so unless we can see that wound, that there's no risk of rabies. Are you kidding me? And especially when it comes to bat, oh, I get the heebie-jeebies. But when it comes to bat wounds, it's so small that they could have bitten the child and we, we can't see it. So you can't say just because we can't see it means they were never bitten and they don't need um, that that uh, uh, rabies um, series. Absolutely not. So that's false. Those are two red flags to let you know that that answer is incorrect. C, setting up appointments. For what? Why are we going to waste time? No, we're going to go ahead and treat that patient as soon as possible. So we're going to get rid of that answer choice. And then D, initiating prophylactic IV antibiotics as soon as possible. No, what they need is the rabies series, which we're going to start as soon as possible. B is the correct answer choice. 
Administration of a snake by anti-venom is A, risky due to, due to the possibility of adverse reaction, B, dependent on identification of the type of snake, C, most effective if given within, the six, within six hours of the bite, or D, indicated in both vipor... I can't pronounce that word. Viparide and alipide snake bites. You guys see the words. I can't pronounce it. You know me. All right. The correct answer is C. It's most effective if given within six hours as soon as possible. Let's look at the wrong answer choices. A, risky due to possibility of adverse reaction. You want to know what the alternative is? Death. Pick your poison, right? So we're not going to give... Um, this treatment because of the possibility of an anaphylactic reaction. If the patient has an anaphylactic reaction to that treatment, we're going to go ahead and treat that anaphylactic reaction. But the point is we want them to live. So that's wrong. B, risky, no, excuse me, B, dependent on the identification of the type of snake. After snake bites, do you think they're going to stick around for us to catch them and then try to figure out what kind of snake bite it is? No, we're going to treat the patient as soon as possible. Uh, D, indicated in both those two types of snakes, guys. I can't pronounce um, the words. And no, that's false, guys. It's indicated actually for pit viper snakes. Um, pit viper snakes is a type of rattlesnake. So the correct answer here is choice C. Which type of snake bite wound require obtaining laboratory studies that includes coagulation studies, blood type, creatinine kinase level, as well as performing serial measurements on the leg where the bite occurred. A, rattlesnake, B, coral snake, three, sea snake, or D, bull snake. And guys, the correct answer is A, rattlesnake. Their venom can lead to edema, swelling, tissue damage, hemorrhage, shock, right? It's very deadly. And something else uh, with the rattlesnake, it can cause compartment syndrome. So that's why we're, we're definitely going to be measuring, doing serial measurements. Remember those six Ps? Well, seven Ps actually. Yeah, you're going to be assessing the patient for those seven Ps because one of those things we're going to be concerned about is compartment syndrome. B, coral snake. With coral snake bites, we see more um, CNS related a manifestation. Same thing with sea snakes, CNS issues. And D, bull snake. Bull snakes are harmless. Harmless. Next question. A patient presents with concerns they may have contracted a tick-related illness. Which of the following pieces of information obtained from the patient would help to reduce the likelihood of tick-borne illnesses? A, a tick engorged to the size of a pea was found on the patient. B, the patient has been camping in wooded grassy area. C, the patient was found crawling around, excuse me, the tick was found, <coughs> excuse me, crawling around on the patient's leg. D, the patient has not been outside, but his dog goes to the park. So we're looking for the answer choice where it would be least likely that the patient would have a tick-borne illness. And the correct answer is C. The tick was found crawling around on the patient's leg. If it's crawling around, it hasn't latched. It hasn't sucked on the patient's blood because when it sucks on the patient's blood, it becomes engorged, right? Its saliva hasn't gone into the patient's skin. So there, the risk for having that illness is severely decreased, right? What we're concerned about is when there's an actual bite, when they've actually pierced that patient's skin, their saliva has gone into that patient's skin, they suck blood from that patient, they become engorged. Now there's a risk. All of the other choices, there is a risk. A, the ticks engorge. You want to know why that ticks engorge? Because of all the blood that they've been sucking. 
B, the patient's been camping in wooded grassy areas. Why? That increases the likeliness of a tick bite because that's where the ticks love to hang out in the, those wooded grassy areas. That's why we tell patients to make sure you're wearing long pants. You wear socks that go over your pants. You wear long sleeves. You want to cover your skin. Choice D, the patient has not been outside but their dog goes to the park. Guess what? That increases the likeliness of the exposure from that tick getting on the dog, right? But see the tick crawling around on the skin? The fact that it's crawling, it's moving, it hasn't bitten that uh, patient, okay? So C's the correct answer choice. Uh, next question. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever typically presents with a history of the patient having visited a, the Rocky Mountains in Nevada, B, grassy plains in Missouri, C, the Rocky Seashore in Oregon, or D, the glacier fields in Montana. And guys, the correct answer is B, grassy plains in Missouri. Again, these ticks are found um, in grassy, woody, or woodland areas. So when you hear the word um, uh, Rocky Mountains, it's tricky. It's a trick question because you'll think, okay, well, they're found in the Rocky Mountains, but they're not. They're found in like grassy, woody areas. So the correct answer, guys, is B, not mountains, not seashore, and not glaciers. A patient presents with a high fever, chills, severe headache, confusion, nausea, and vomiting. You also notice a red, not non-itchy rash on the patient's wrists, palms, ankles, and feet. Which question answered in the affirmative might pinpoint the source of these symptoms? Best, excuse me. So which one, when you ask and the patient says yes, that kind of lets you know, okay, this is what we're dealing with. A, have you been around someone else with these symptoms? B, have you taken any medications or used soaps lately? C, have you been out walking in an area grassy or wooded? D, have you been wading in weedy pond that has ducks lately? And guys, the correct answer is C. Have you been walking out in an area that is grassy or wooded? Why? That's where the ticks like to hang out. So that's a great question to ask. By the way, um, this is very deadly. So you expect the treatment, they're going to be treated with doxycycline. That's a treatment that you expect to be ordered for this type of patient. Which of the following statements made by a patient being discharged with a tick bite indicates need for further instructions? A, I need to get antibiotics every time I find a tick walking on me. B, when I go walking, I will wear my pants tucked into my socks. C, to remove a tick, grab the head with tweezers and twist off. D, I will use tick repellent when walking in areas with known ticks. And guys, the correct answer is A, because the question is asking us which needs further instruction. Whenever you have a test question asking you which one needs further instructions, which one needs confirmation, which one needs follow-up, which one would you question, what they're really asking you is which one's the wrong answer choice. And here, the wrong answer choice is I need to get antibiotics every time I find a tick walking on me. If it's walking on you, it did not bite you. It did not sting you. It's not engorged. Its saliva did not get into your skin, and it did not suck your blood. So that's the wrong answer, but all of the other choices, B, C, and D are all correct. Neurotoxins released by the black widow spider can lead to A, hypotension tachycardia, B, urticaria and necrosis, C, stinging and muscle fasciculation, or D, hemolysis and renal failure. And guys, the correct answer is um, C, tingling and muscle fasciculation. So we're talking about the black uh, widow spider. Its neurotoxins can cause nausea, weakness, um, muscle spasms, hypertension, tachycardia, paresthesia, like the uh, tingling sensation, and even seizures. Okay. Um, urticaria necrosis, we see that more in the brown recluse spider. And hemolysis and renal failure, we see that more in the brown recluse spider bites. 
Anticipated therapy for a black widow spider bite would include which of the following? A, immediate debridement of that area. B, administration of corticosteroids. C, immediate IV antibiotics. Or D, anti-venom after skin testing. Now remember guys, we're not talking about snake bite, we're talking about spider bites. The correct answer is D, anti-venom after skin testing. And let me tell you why. The um, reaction that the patient can have to the anti-venom is um, severe and the time, the duration, the time that we have between the bite and treatment is not as deadly as a snake bite would be, where we have to get it to them right away or they're gonna die. We are given more wiggle room when it comes to the spider. So that's why we're able to do that skin testing because we wanna make sure that they don't get an anaphylactic reaction from the venom. Where the snake bite, we have no choice. Time is of the essence, it's either that or they die, okay? So that's the difference. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. We have um, A, immediate debridement of the area. This is a spider bite. There's really nothing to debride. If it was like a brown recluse, then I'd say yes, but this is a black widow that we're talking about. So no. Um, choice B, administration of corticosteroids. What's that going to do? Corticosteroids help decrease inflammation. So wrong. Um, it's not going to help. Choice C, immediate um, IV antibiotics. We would give that if the patient developed a secondary infection. So they got an infection, then we go ahead and give the patient antibiotics as needed, right? We go ahead and culture, see what type of antibiotics that the patient would be susceptible to, and we give that. But there's nothing in this question that's even talking about having an infection. So the correct answer is D, anti-venom after skin testing. Which of the following pathophysiologic events occurs with frostbite associated tissue damage? A, vasodilatory capillary leak, B, sledging related thrombosis, C, cardiopulmonary ice crystals, or D, decreased vessel permeability. And the correct answer is B, sludging related thrombosis. So what happens is with the uh, frostbite, the blood becomes slushy, okay? It comes, becomes sl slushy while being surrounded by tissues that are basically turned into like icicles or ice crystals, I should say. So what happens is that blood starts to slow down. What happens when blood slows down? It starts to coagulate. Clots actually make it worse. B is the correct answer. The reason I'm explaining to you the pathophysiology, guys, is memorization doesn't work. But if you understand what's happening, you know why it's happening, you're never going to forget it. So that's why I kind of explain the patho so you can just remember it in your mind. All right, which of the following is a true statement regarding superficial frostbite? A, water-filled blisters occur. B, the skin's usually necrotic. C, there's no sensation in the area. Or D, skin is hard and non-palpable. Non-pliable, I'm sorry, non-pliable. And guys, the correct answer is A, water-filled blisters occur. Why? We're talking about um, superficial frostbite, not deep. You see choices B, C, and D? This does happen, but that's with deep frostbite, when that frostbite is extensive. It's not just superficial, right? But when it's superficial, they're going to have water-filled um, blisters, but deep, we're going to see choices B, C, D, also hemorrhage. Add hemorrhage onto that list because you will see that. Which of the following would be proper care for frostbitten feet? A, rewarming should occur when there's no further chance of refreezing. B, the feet should rest on the bottom of a basin filled with hot water. C, a hair dryer should be used if hot water is not available immediately. D, re, um, warming should occur 15 to 30 minute increments for five to six hours. And guys, the correct answer is A, rewarming should occur when there's no further chance of freezing. So we need to make sure that there's no chance of that tissue freezing again. And when there's no chance, we are going to rewarm as soon as possible. We are not going to delay that uh, type of care. Choice B, the feet should rest on the bottom of a basin filled um, 
Basin filled with hot water, absolutely not, because you see that basin that can cause cellular damage. So we're not gonna do that. Choice C, hair dryer should be used. No, when you're rewarming, you never use dry heat. You're gonna use, rewarm with fluid, not dry heat. So that's false. And then D, rewarming should occur 15, in 15 to 30 minute increments, four, five to six hours. No, we want rapid, we, re, we want rapid rewarming that's a tongue twister okay we don't want to um rewarm slowly no we want to do it rapidly so the only correct answer choice here guys is um a and we are down to our last question which of the following statements made by a patient being discharged with frostbite would indicate positive understanding a, I will stop using my aspirin and ibuprofen. B, I'll continue to wear tightly fitting stockings. C, I'll drink more coffee to help healing. D, I'll keep my feet elevated to heart level. And the correct answer is D, I'll keep my feet elevated to heart level. Why? We want to promote circulation. That's why. Go back to the question. It's asking us which statement for a patient that's being discharged with frostbite shows that they understand. With frostbite is de decreased perfusion. We want to increase perfusion so they understand when they say they're going to keep their feet elevated to the level of the heart, increases circulation to and from the feet. Choices A, B, and C are wrong. Um, choice B, I'll stop using aspirin and ibuprofen. Uh, no, we want to increase blood flow and decrease sludge. Remember, we talked about sludge and frostbite, right? How... Um, the the blood flow starts to slow down it uh, the blood becomes thick and slushy we want to decrease that so that's wrong choice b i'll continue wear tightly fitting stockings no loose clothes right we're trying to increase circulation and decrease pressure so that's false and then d i'll drink more coffee to help with healing what do we know about coffee vasoconstriction just like smoking causes vasoconstriction ca caffeine can cause vasoconstriction and against Again, we want to increase circulation, not decrease circulation. So that's why D is the correct answer choice. I hope this video was helpful because I never want to do a video like this in my life. But guys, let me know what you thought in the comment section. Um, if you really, really, really want a part two, I'll make a part two for you. But I'm hoping this was enough. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or in the near future. Don't forget to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. One more thing, guys. I had no idea what Super Thanks is. I People have who appreciate my material, right under the video, there's something that you can say. I think it says thanks and or super thanks. And, you know, it's just a, a gift, a love gift or a gift of appreciation. So I want to say thank you to everyone, every single person that clicked on that button and sent me something because I didn't even know about it. I, it just so happened. I saw an email about a super thing. So I'm like, okay, what is YouTube talking about? So I had to go to YouTube and do a search on super things because I had no idea what they were talking about in the video. It showed me how to go to my own um, settings and take a look. And I didn't I didn't think I had any super thanks and I couldn't believe it. So guys, I don't, anyone who sent me a super thank, I don't want you to think I was a, a ignoring you. I just didn't know. I never saw it. I just realized that it even existed. So there are too many on here for me to name you by name, but um, little by little, I'm going to go under, because in the comment, I'll see the things. I'm going to thank you in there. So I want to let you know from the bottom of my heart, every single one of you that see my video and you click on that button and even if it's 99 cents that you send me, I appreciate it. I appreciate it because it makes me feel good just knowing that someone took the time just to say thank you. So thank you so much to each and every one of you. And if I have it typed in that comment, thank you yet, it's coming. It just takes some time. So thank you for the love and appreciation. And guys, as much as you guys love me and show me love, I love you too. And I'm going to keep going hard for you because I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.